Have you ever wondered how Flutter translates the movements of your user's grimy fingers into actual human recognizable concepts like taps, drags, or pinches? If so, you're in good company because it's a complicated topic. Like most things in Flutter, it all just works. But there are some occasional gotchas to watch out for. Many Flutter developers have already met the gesture detector widget, which is responsible for interpreting user taps, clicks, and drags, and so on, so this adventure is primarily about how that widget works, who decides what happens if there are multiple gesture detectors, and what happens if they each detect multiple gestures. Behind the scenes, when you register a listener with a gesture detector, it spins up a specialized gesture recognizer and attaches your listener. So when we write this code, Flutter turns it into this. That tap gesture recognizer class knows how to tell if raw interaction data is a tap, and it has a pointer to the code that you wanted to run when it recognizes one. And what does this raw interaction data look like? Well, take that gesture detector we had before, fill an entire page with it, and then tap in a few places, and you'll start to see raw coordinates print to the screen. Though this is actually a little misleading, because our functions don't actually get called until the end of a long, arduous journey. So this is not the raw interaction data that I mentioned earlier. For a more realistic look at that raw interaction data, put this in your app. Start with a listener widget, which is vaguely similar to a gesture detector, but for receiving completely unprocessed interaction data from the operating system, and add some callbacks. To follow click events, subscribe to onPointerDown and onPointerUp. That pointer event class contains everything you could care about including the location, time, device, type of interaction, and even how hard the user is pressing, if applicable. To track things like swipes, pans, and zooms, provide an on-pointer move callback. To see this in action, run your app again, touch the screen, move your finger around, and get ready for that sweet, sweet raw interaction data. This is what Flutter has to deal with when it's trying to figure out what your users are up to with their grimy fingers. Why is no one washing their hands? Looking at that data stream, can you tell what happened? Were there a lot of taps? Were any of them double taps? How about long presses? Unless you're that guy from the Matrix who stares at falling green glyphs all day, of course you can't tell. And this highlights the job of the gesture detector. It wraps that listener widget and interprets its primitive data stream, exposing convenient handlers for human recognizable events like tapping, swiping, and pinching. But there's an additional layer of complexity here we have yet to consider. Imagine this gesture detector is receiving that same stream of data from its inner listener widget, except consider its perspective immediately after the first data event arrives. As that event appears, how's the gesture detector to know whether this is a tap or the start of a double tap or a long press? Without a crystal ball to look into the future, it has no idea. Making sense of all this is called gesture disambiguation, and it's super fun. We're finally ready to learn about the gesture arena, where competing ideas about what the user is up to battle it out in a winner-takes-all fight to the death. This summer, one user, one gesture, multiple recognizers, who will survive? Gesture Arena, coming to a mobile app near you. Remember how earlier I said specific gesture callbacks get attached to recognizers, like this? Well, our gesture detector has three families of gestures to consider. Tap, double tap, and long press. So it would create three distinct recognizers. Then when a fresh event comes in, all three are admitted into the arena for hardcore gladiatorial action, played with the following rules. One. At any time, a recognizer can declare defeat and leave the arena. If there's ever only one recognizer left in the arena, that recognizer is the winner. And two, at any time, a recognizer can declare victory, which causes it to win and all the other remaining recognizers to lose. Hm. Well, actually, that sounds rather peaceful. Each recognizer has an algorithm that it uses to decide whether it should declare victory or bow out. The tap gesture recognizer's algorithm is relatively simple. It never declares victory, 
and it only admits defeat if the pointer strays too far from the down location before a pointer up event is received, as that would suggest that the user is panning and not tapping. The double tap gesture recognizer's rules aren't too bad either. After a single tap appears, it sets a 300 millisecond timer, after which, if it hasn't seen another tap, it admits defeat. It's like the world's shortest snooze alarm. Of course, if it does see a tap during that window, it declares victory. And the long press gesture recognizer uses a similar timer, but with the opposite effect. It sets a 500 millisecond timer, after which, if the user is still holding their press, it declares victory. But if a pointer up event appears before that timer elapses, the long press gesture recognizer admits defeat. Of course, there's recognizers for all the other gestures as well. Pan, scale, force press, horizontal drag, and vertical drag. And they all have their own algorithms, but you get the idea. To wrap this up, let's consider a few scenarios and think about how it will all play out in the arena. First, let's imagine that loaded up gesture detector with all of its recognizers in the arena after one pointer down event, which we'll say happened at time zero. Then a mere 50 milliseconds later, a pointer up event appears, causing the long press recognizer to bow out long before it ever reaches its 500 millisecond victory threshold. Tap recognizer and double tap recognizer, however, are both still in the running. Then it's all quiet on the gesture front until the 300 millisecond mark, when the double tap recognizer's timer elapses, causing it to admit defeat. At last, the gesture arena has reached one of its victory conditions. If there's ever only one recognizer left in the arena, that recognizer is the winner. Our tap recognizer takes home the trophy and Flutter calls its on tap method. Note that because our gesture detector has registered listeners that don't make up their mind for up to half a second, our single tap listener had to wait a while before it got called. You can test this yourself in the dart pad linked below. Toggle whether the gesture detector's on tap method is the only parameter and notice the tiny change in latency. And for one more scenario, imagine that same set of Gesture Arena combatants, but this time there's a second pointer down event at 150 milliseconds and a pointer up event at 200 milliseconds. In this scenario, the double tap recognizer sees its chance, declares victory, and escapes the arena victorious. Its on double tap handler is called immediately, and everyone else misses out. And by the way, user interaction events bubble up your widget tree, with descendant Gesture Detector widgets taking precedence. The first gesture detector to rule the arena wins, meaning if your gesture detector has a parent gesture detector that implements the same listeners, the child's recognizers will always win. There are plenty of other interesting layers to this system, like the behavior parameter and its opaque versus transparent options. But for a deeper dive on those and other gesture topics, check out Guillaume Diallo Moulier's talk at Flutter Vikings, also linked below. And for everything else on Flutter, head to flutter.dev.